Let's suppose that you are driving in Canada and you see a sign that asks you to travel at the speed of 90 kilometers per hour. If your car doesn't show that measurement, you'd like to be able to know how fast you could actually drive. So let's take a peek at what 90 kilometers per hour would be and see if we can figure out what that would be in miles per hour, which is what a US car would have um, on its speedometer. In this case, notice that what we have is actually a multi-unit value. We have kilometers, which is a measure of distance, per hour, which gives us a measurement of time. And so when we set up our problems for dimensional analysis, keep in mind that the word per is a very commonly used word for fractions and for division. And so when we're looking at our units to set up, in this case, we could set this up as 90 kilometers per using our fraction or division sign here, hour. Now, in this case, if you'd like, you can think of it as 90 kilometers per one hour. You can write the one in there or not, as you will. Now, when we go to do our dimensional analysis, notice that I have kilometers here and miles here. So I need to take a moment and figure out what that um, conversion factor is going to be. What's the relationship between kilometers and miles? Well, you can go and check out the uh, conversion table if this isn't a value that you're familiar with. Um, and if I check that out, I find that, looking up is slow here, 1.6 kilometers is equal to one mile. So I have kilometers as my unit and I want to get rid of them. So I'm going to put kilometers on the bottom in the denominator. I'd like to change kilometers per hour to miles per hour, so I'm going to put miles on the top now. In this case now, I know 1.6 kilometers is equal to 1 mile, so I can put 1.6 in the denominator with the kilometers unit, 1 mile, the 1 on the top with the mile unit. Now the kilometers will divide out, leaving me with miles as a unit on the top and hours as a unit on the bottom. This is exactly what I want for my final solution. Now, same process as we did with a single unit conversion, we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Here I have 90 times one miles, and on the bottom I'm gonna have one times 1.6 hours. 90 times one gives me 90 divided by 1.6, gives me 56.25 miles per hour. So same process, start with your value written as a fraction, multiply by a series of conversion factors or conversion fractions to get the units that you don't want to go away and leave you behind with just the units that you want. Uh, all right, let's take a look at another example. Let's suppose that we do a measurement in a lab for speed and we find that something is traveling at a speed of 25.1 meters per second. I'd like an idea of how fast that is in, eh, let's still do miles per hour. This time when I go to do my next conversion factor, notice that I've got meters here and I'm gonna to have to convert to miles, but I also have seconds as my time unit here and I'm gonna to have to convert to hours. So in this problem, I'm going to need to do conversions of both of the pieces of the units in order to come up with my solution. To start out, we always start by writing the value that we know. In this case, we have 25.1 meters per one second. Then we want to multiply by a series of fractions that will get us to miles per hour. Let's start by getting rid of the meters. Right now, the meters are on top, so if I want them to divide out, I need to put them on the bottom. I can go from meters 
into feet using one of the conversions that we have listed on the conversion table. One meter is equal to 3.28 feet. Okay, so I can go from meters to feet. One meter is 3.28 feet. Now my meters will divide out. And now I have a measurement in feet per second because those are the units that remain. I want miles per hour. So I'm going to have to change and get rid of feet and change that to miles. Well, again, looking at the conversion table, I can see that one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. My feet units will divide out and leaving me with the miles unit, which is what I want. I really like to kind of cross these units out along the way so I can see what I'm left with remaining that hasn't divided out as part of the process. Right now I have miles on the top, but I have seconds on the bottom and I want miles per hour. So I'm gonna to have to keep going. This time, because seconds are in the denominator, if I want the seconds to divide out, I'm going to have to put seconds in the numerator. Remember, it's got to be something on top with something on the bottom. I'm going to go from seconds to, if I don't know how many seconds are in an hour, I can do seconds in a minute. 60 seconds in one minute. My seconds in the denominator and my seconds in the numerator cancel out. Now I have miles per minute. Close, but not quite. So to finish off, I need to get rid of the minutes and make that final conversion to hours. Right now, minutes are on the bottom, so minutes go on the top to divide out. And I am going to go to the hours. And notice this is going to put hours in the bottom, which is what I'm going to want for that particular unit. There are 60 minutes in one hour. The minute units divide out, and now I'm at hours as the only remaining unit in the denominator. And miles are the only remaining unit in the numerator. Now I just have to go through and multiply each of these values. So for the top, I'm going to have to do 25.1 times 3.28 times 1 times 60 times 60. And on the bottom, I'll have 1 times 1 times 5,280 times 1 times 1. So I'm just multiplying all of those values that remain. Along the bottom, that's 5,280. That's an easy multiplication. Along the top, uh, grabbing out my calculator, 25.1 times 3.28 times 1 times 60 times 60. And I come up with 296,380.8. Divide the top and the bottom. So divide by 5,280. And I end up with 56.1, and my units were the miles that were remaining on top and the hours that were remaining on the bottom. So 25.1 meters per second will correlate with a speed of 56.1 miles per hour. All right, one last kind of example here before we, before we end. Um, let's suppose that we want to uh, lay out and purchase some carpeting. We have a room in the house maybe that measures 12 feet by, let's say, 15 feet. Now, if we were to measure the area for the carpeting here, we could do 12 times 15, which would give me 180. My units for area, however, come from multiplying these units that remain. I have feet, I'm multiplying it by feet, and so I end up with square feet. You'll see it written like this sometimes, or sometimes you'll see it written out as square feet. Okay, well, if you go to a store and want to purchase carpeting, carpeting is always sold in square yards. So for this problem, I'm going to have to do a little bit of conversion as I go through. So if I start with my 180 square feet, what I am going to want to do is continue to use this idea of dimensional analysis by multiplying by a series of fractions that will do the conversion for me. In this case, when you look at your conversion table, you may not see any conversions for area. A lot of times we just see conversions for our base units here like this. Square feet 
in square yards, but I know that there's three feet in one yard. So if I look at this problem here, I know that to get rid of feet squared, I'm going to need feet on the bottom with yards on the top. And I know that there's three feet in one yard, but if I were to try to cancel this stuff out right now, notice that the feet squared does not completely cancel out with the feet in the denominator. So in order to fix that, you can square the entire conversion factor or the entire conversion fraction. On a sidebar over here, let's kind of look at what this is going to look like. If I have one yard over three feet squared, remember that squaring something means that you multiply it by itself. So I'm going to multiply by one yard over three feet. If I nothing divides out because of the values are on the top and on the bottom, uh, so we just multiply straight across. And one yard times one yard gives me one yard squared. And multiplying across the bottom, three feet times three feet gives me nine feet squared. And so by multiplying by my conversion factor in this way, by squaring both the top and the bottom, I'm able to get a conversion factor that involves square feet and square yards instead of just the feet and yards that I'm familiar with. So let's go back up here and rewrite my problem. 180 feet squared times, now I'm going to use this factor here that one yard squared is equivalent in value to nine feet squared. Now I can divide out my common factor unit of feet squared. I'm left behind with yards squared and I can find my final solution. Multiplying across the top, I have 180 times 1. I guess we can put that over 1 if we want. We end up with 9 on the bottom, and I end up with 180 divided by 9, which is 20 square yards of carpeting that I would need to buy.